Well, today we're at work. This is where the magic happens. The professional magic, not like other magic. This is where the professional magic happens. So here we are at work. So I've got the model up um, because today we are bending tubes. So uh, you can see um, there are, there's basically four tubes in the frame that require bends. There are these two lower tubes, one on each side. There's the front hoop. And then if I zoom out just a little bit, there's the rear main hoop. So those four bends need to happen today. So that is the plan. So I've got my kind of crib sheets here. I'm going to run out to the shop. Here, why don't you guys come with me? Oh, wait a second. Forgetting my coffee. That's important. So we go out to the shop. Look, it's festive. We're very festive here at Three Axis. And we go this way. Here's our door to... Now this is where the professional magic happens. All right, a little baby welding area. We don't do a lot of welding here. We just do it for when we need like small brackets and stuff like that. If we need large parts done, we usually outsource that. Uh, but this is the bender, right? So this is, um, I think it's a JMR bender. I can't remember who I bought it from last year. Uh, and I've got a tube st stabbed in it right now. Let me take that out so you can see kind of how this operates. Um, set that down. Hold on. Come with me. Come with me. Here we go. All right. So here is the contraption. So the contraption happens. Um, it has this die that's inside. And so I come on this side. You can see a little better. So this die moves with the swing arm. And then this follower stays in place. It's fixed in place. And that is what keeps the tube like pressed up tight to it and maintains the tube shape. So the, how this works is you have this crazy sawtooth part right here. And as you work the mechanism, it will slowly, so like, you know, as you, let me just do it here. Let me just do it so you can see it. So using this crazy mechanical advantage. So I've got a lever arm that is what? An inch and a half. And I'll put it a big long stick of pipe in there. And basically by working that lever arm and continuing to kind of like come back here and reload the machine. It will sit there and slowly stretch that tube out and pull it against the die and cause it to bend. So let me get some marks laid out on a tube and get a tube loaded in here and I will show you what's going on. All right, give it back. All right. So here we go, we're set up. We're gonna do our first bend here. Um, this is uh, one of the tubes that goes along the chassis. It just has one single 90 degree bend. So this bend is super simple. Basically get the tube loaded up into the machine. Um, I think this is a JMR bender. I think that's right. Yeah, it's JMR. Um, but once you get the tube all loaded up, you kind of like, there's a little bit of slop in the system. You kind of get everything set tight and taut. You set your angle gauge to zero. Make sure everything is kind of like all the slack is taken up. And then it's just a matter of kind of like working that arm that I showed you earlier. And that leverage will get transferred into this bigger, much longer arm. And that will sit there and pull the tube around. Now, most people have their tubing benders like permanently mounted to a big base here at three axis. I like to keep it on a weird table so I can brace my foot up here and start pulling the tube around. It's a great, Morning workout. Right there we're at 30 degrees. You can see I'm starting to actually run out of teeth. And I'm only at 40 degrees there. So in order to continue the bend, this swing arm has another spot in the die to put the drive pin. And then you just keep working it. Where are we? A little over 40. Thank <laughs> you. 
So right there, if I keep pressure on it, it's gonna, it is 90 degrees. But I know that as soon as I release pressure, it's gonna wanna spring back just a little bit. So it's actually at about 86, 87. So that means I need to go an extra few degrees past. And you kind of have to, right there. So the tube has a little bit of um, lubricant sprayed on it. So it wants to kind of spring back. So you kind of have to use your judgment here, right there. So I think we're good, right there, we're at 90. And I can always, if I take it out and put the square on it, and it looks like we need a few more degrees, put it back in the machine, give it a couple more bends. It's hard to take bend out. It's way easier to put a little bit more bend in. So anyway, there's one tube. Let's do a couple more. I'm gonna get set up for a different one uh, and show you how we do multiple bends in the same tube. All right, so we're back. So I'm getting set up. So I did the first bend, and then this is that front hoop. So there's two bends, right? There's two 90 degree bends. So how do you do the layout on it? Well, it's pretty simple. I know that the die that I purchased is a six inch center line radius. So the radius point from the dead center of that tube would be six inches. So if I put my square up to my tube here and measure across, now I'm measuring from the outside of the tube, so I have to add in that extra thickness, right? I'm not measuring from the center, which is what that, which is what the die is doing. I'm measuring from the outside, so I have to add this tube's an inch and a quarter, so that's five eighths. So if I measure across six and five eight, five eighths of an inch, so six inches for the center line radius, and then the five eighths for that extra width of tube, I can mark exactly where the end of that bend is. And then in my drawing, I know that this straight section is it's like seven and five eighths basically. So I have that marked out. So now what I'll do is I'll get the tube put into back into the machine and line my markup with the edge of my die because that's where the bend always starts. And then there's one other thing you have to do, which is get everything leveled out. So let me get this thing kind of put together and then I'll show you that real quick. All right, so last step on multi-point bends is to get everything leveled out. So like I said, most people have their two benders in like a permanent mount. When you do that, you need to make sure that this fixed arm, the one that doesn't swing, is level, right? And I want it level between where my end point is and where the pivot is. So you like throw a torpedo level on there and make sure that that thing is dead nut center because what happens is, is when we go to do our next bend, I'll put my level on the end of the tube here and get that thing to match the same slope as my lever arm because the bend will always follow that same plane. I mean, I could set this thing up to be 45 degrees, and if I set that to be exactly 45 degrees, that whole thing would always bend in the same plane. So that's how you end up with two bends that end up even with each other and not cattywampus. So this is actually out just a little bit. So I'm going to tweak that just a hair because trying to get two ends, like that's perfectly level. This one's kicking down just a little bit. Oh, look at that. There we go, Never mind. So of course this needs to go up just a hair. And it really is worth it to get to spend some time to make sure that this thing is spot on. And then once you have it, um, you set your little, there's a little drive pin here that puts pressure against the tube and that will keep it from wanting to rotate. And then once you get your bend started, it will stay in position, but you don't really get a second chance to fix this, to fix it. So get it done right the first time. All right, so that's it. So I'm going to do my next 90 degree bend. This tube's going to have a whole bunch extra. I'll just leave it on there because I left this tube just a little bit long. That way I can kind of like put everything on the table, get some accurate measurements, make sure everything's cut even and flush. Um, and then I got to get the main hoop done and take everything home and weld and cut and weld and cut and weld and cut and weld. There you go. There's my mom. So, all right, that's all I got for today. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye.